Welcome back to our series on the Shroud of Turin, a mystery that continues to kindle the world's curiosity. If you've been tailing our journey, you'll recall that in our previous episodes, we've unearthed compelling evidence that disputes the medieval theory of the Shroud's origin. We've also explored how modern technology, specifically AI, has been used to refine the image on the Shroud, exposing a remarkably realistic Nazarene Semitic face it's almost as if we've become veritable detectives, starting our investigations right from our mother's basement. Discovery to many indicates a resemblance to Jesus, or at least someone of the same race and culture who underwent a similar plight. As we peel back the layers, the enigma of the shroud only deepens. The further we venture, the stronger our conviction that this isn't the handiwork of a forger, but rather a relic that defies conventional understanding. Today we dig deeper into the scientific discoveries about the Shroud of Turin. With our metaphorical magnifying glasses in hand and the echo of our mother's worried calls for dinner in our ears, let's continue our journey into this captivating mystery. In the year 944, an event of great significance took place. The city of Edessa had fallen to Islam, and the Emperor feared for the safety of Christendom's most holy relic. In a diplomatic triumph, the sacred cloth was retrieved from Edessa, exchanged for 200 prisoners of war and bags of silver, and brought to Constantinople without a drop of blood being shed. Once in Constantinople, an illustrious ceremony was held. The cloth was laid out on the Emperor's throne and crowned with the Emperor's crown. It's hard not to imagine that the Emperor wasn't making some sort of a fashion statement with his holy relic. After all, what says in vogue better than a sacred cloth, right? Standing next to the linen, Gregory the Archdeacon of the Hagia Sophia delivered a sermon that is still remembered today. He pointed out the distinct features of the cloth, saying, The splendor has been impressed uniquely by the drops of agony sweat sprinkled from the face. These are truly the beauties that produce the coloring of Christ's imprint, which has been embellished further by the drops of blood sprinkled from his own side. Blood and water there, sweat and image here, this early description of the shroud is a clear reference to the side wound, proving it was more than a mere face image. He mentions blood and water, which on the shroud we now know shows the separation of blood and serum appearing clear like water, indicating a wound that occurred after death when the blood is no longer circulating. He also mentions sweat as a cause of the image, indicating an absence of paint, just as we see on the shroud. However, we know it's not sweat, as the image never soaked into the cloth and is superficial, and sweat never causes high-definition images. These early descriptions of the shroud provide us with crucial clues to its origins. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the Shroud of Turin, we find that each new discovery only adds to its intrigue. What more will we uncover as we continue this journey of exploration? Stay tuned to find out. The image on the shroud isn't just a profound piece of art. It's a conundrum, a mystery that keeps scholars, scientists, and the plain inquisitive on their toes. The Shroud of Turin, as we've come to acknowledge it, is more than a mere artifact from the Middle Ages. It's a testament to an event that altered the path of human history. Our comprehension of the shroud took a massive leap in the 70s when the boffins at Las Alamos National Laboratory uncovered a staggering revelation. The image on the shroud had three-dimensional data encoded into it. This was an earth-shattering discovery, akin to finding out that the Mona Lisa had been an early attempt at a selfie. This unforeseen discovery was only possible because of the groundbreaking efforts of physicist John P. Jackson, thermodynamicist Eric Jumper, and photographer William Motton, who applied aerospace science techniques to scrutinize the Shroud of Turin. This 3D data wasn't a random, it was a critical clue that helped us grasp the uniqueness of the image on the Shroud. It served as proof that this image was not the creation of human hands. No artist, irrespective of their skill level, could imitate the complexity of this image. It wasn't merely a negative image, it was one that carried within it a depth and dimensionality beyond human capabilities. No other painting or photograph has this 3D depth. The Shroud is not merely a painting or a representation, it is a record, a snapshot of a moment in time that encapsulates the essence of its subject. It's an image that, in spite of its age and surrounding enigma, continues to captivate us, to communicate with us, to challenge our comprehension of art. 
history and perhaps even our perception of reality itself. The image on the shroud, as we've come to understand, is not merely an image. It is a message, a testament, a witness to an event that has shaped the course of human history. It serves as proof of a moment of profound significance that, despite the sands of time, continues to touch our hearts and stir our souls. As we've now realized, the Shroud's image is unlike any other in existence. Not even the earliest attempt at a selfie could match it. The Shroud is not a photograph either. It's more like a reality TV show where the drama is more behind the scenes than the scripted performance on the surface. Beneath the facade, it is as though an X-ray lens has been cast over the cloth, bringing to light hidden details. The thumb, for instance, is visible under the hand. This corresponds with crucifixion through the wrists, which would cause the thumb to contract. Yet intriguingly, it's as if we're looking through the hand itself, seeing what should be so conveniently hidden from view, much like a reality show's unseen footage. Dr. John Jackson X-ray of his hand here with comparison to the shrouds. And there's more. At the rear, the spine vertebrae are discernible, a detail that would be impossible to capture in a mere painting or imprint. These details even AI can extract to form images with. Similarly, the roots of the teeth and finger bones are visible, extending all the way back to the wrists. Of these details, captured in the shroud, defies explanation and challenges our understanding of its creation. These remarkable details further deepen the mystery surrounding the shroud. It makes the attempt to dismiss it back in the 1980s with a carbon date to the Middle Ages laughable. Using advanced technology, we have made a fascinating discovery. We've taken the task of clearing and enhancing the shroud using artificial intelligence, a process that has brought forth remarkable details hidden for centuries. Imagine a digital artist delicately brushing away the layers of time, revealing the subtlest nuances of the face imprinted on the shroud. Following this, we've created a model face using AI. This isn't just a random face, but a carefully crafted representation embodying the characteristics of a Nazarene Semitic man as per historical and anthropological data. The most intriguing part of our exploration came when we superimposed the shroud face over this model face. The alignment was uncanny. The features, the contours, the details all seemed to fall into place as if the shroud had found its rightful owner. The results of this process have been nothing short of remarkable. It compels us to ask, could this be the face of Jesus or could it be someone who lived during his time? Our journey with the Shroud is far from over. While we've explored its historic significance and unique characteristics, there's still so much left to uncover. We invite you to be part of this intriguing exploration. Share your insights, thoughts or questions in the comments. We value your input in this shared quest for understanding. And if you haven't done so yet, do subscribe to stay updated on our next episodes. Join us next time as we continue to unravel the mystery of the Shroud of Turin. Until then, keep the conversation going in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.